For the longest of time, we've seen Mario transfer from different genres. I mean, he's been in pretty much every single genre you can think of. 3D Mario, 2D Mario, spin-offs such as an RPG Mario, turn-based strategy, adventure, action RPG. We've seen them all. Even kart racers, party games, and just a whole lot of sports titles as well. Mario has covered almost every single genre. I mean, the only thing that we really don't have is a third-person slash first-person shooter from the company. And technically, we do have Mario Rabbids, which is more tactical-based, but they do have guns! So yes, Mario has covered so many things, but there's still technically one thing that Nintendo hasn't done released in a full game fashion for Mario, and that being a completely open-world Mario experience. But what if I told you that Nintendo could be working on a big open-world Mario and that the next game for the Mario franchise is going to be open-world, a giant expansive landscape for Mario to traverse at any order and in any fashion that he wants. That could be pretty exciting. So today we're going to jump in and dive into this theory and talk about how this could actually happen and how there's actually evidence pointing towards this. But before we get started, I want to thank you guys again for helping us reach our goal for the end of the year. We are now in the month of November and you guys have been absolutely killing that subscribe button and bringing in more people than ever. I can't thank you guys enough. Our goal is to hit 150,000 by the end of the year and we've been getting almost 300 subs a day. We got 300 subs just the other day and I just cannot thank Thank you guys enough so please if you enjoy this video if you like this video make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things nintendo and all things mario in general so like i said we've had many types of open 3d sandbox mario games such as 64 sunshine and even the new odyssey game but of course these are not purely open world mario games these kind of have its limitations and limits with different missions and segmented levels meaning that there's always a world map or some type of way to travel to the next area and we haven't had a fully interconnected world that Mario could just roam and run to any world, any level, at any time that he wants. Well, that is until Bowser's Fury released. Bowser's Fury was a side mode to Mario 3D World, and it was something completely different that we have never seen from Mario before. It was a fully open world for Mario to explore. Kind of. You still had to unlock different levels in different regions, but it was all interconnected once it was all said and done. Everything wasn't accessible from the very beginning, but eventually, by the very end, the entire Lake Lap Cat was all available to Mario and Plessy to ride around whenever they wanted to. And halfway through the game, you could pretty much collect any cat shine at any location that you wanted. What was so odd about this is this game was just such a weird spin for Nintendo. And we know Nintendo doesn't do these things on purpose and completely forget about them and ignore them. For the most part, they do these things as a test. I mean, let's just take Kirby for instance. They released two smaller 3D Kirby games on the 3DS to test how Kirby would work in a 3D environment. And now look what happened. Boom! We have a big brand new 3D adventure game for Kirby coming next year in the form of Kirby in the Forgotten Land. So, I feel like they're doing almost the same exact thing for Mario right here. This could very well be a test for Mario to see how he works in an open world environment, a purely open world environment, where everything is interconnected with one giant world, and Mario can go from island to island exploring anything and everything that he wants. Now Bowser's Fury was small, I mean extremely small. All the worlds also felt very similar, just different types of overall themes. Maybe one had lava, one had more water, but it was just all kind of the same. They were all obstacle courses where Mario had to reach the end in order to get the cat shine. There wasn't anything like geographically different that made the world stand out, especially like Mario Odyssey, how each world had almost a completely different art style. But imagine a mode like Bowser's Fury that's actually a full game. In fact, the entire world is 10 to 15 times bigger than what Bowser's Fury's map was, and just imagine all Mario Odyssey's worlds put together, and they all seamlessly flow into each other throughout the landscape. And you can just visit all these different areas and terrain, and it would just be absolutely amazing to be able to do that. There was no hub world, there was no hub map, or anything like that. No way to travel from one place to another, just your feet and whatever you have around you, and whatever is based in that region. For instance, maybe you can take Jaxi all the way from the end of the desert, all the way to the edge where you're on the edge of the Wooded Kingdom, and then you enter the Wooded Kingdom now. That would actually be pretty cool and everything would just all feel interconnected in such a great way. Believe it or not, Bowser's Fury did something that I kind of wish that Breath of the Wild did. More kind of overworld live events, crazy things that would happen in the overworld at specific times. With Bowser waking up every like four or five minutes, it kept everything kind of fresh, 
but also got kind of repetitive since it happened too much. But what if something like that happened with a big open world Mario game? Some type of big threat would come out all over the map at a specific time and maybe you couldn't do anything to hurt it yet until you got a specific item or got to a specific world. And I wish kind of Breath of the Wild did the same thing. Could you imagine if there was a, a humongous guardian that came out like once every like two in-game days and you couldn't do anything with it but avoid it and hide when this thing came out? until you got a special weapon or some type of way to get inside of it. That would be really cool, and I wish they did something like that. And I think Bowser being the big kind of centerpiece of the map was something that was very interesting, how Mario could get this super giga cat bell and actually fight him from time to time, and it just kept the world fresh overall. Now when people hear the words open world, they always think realism, that everything has to be kind of based off of real environments and realism, and it doesn't. Just because it doesn't look like Breath of the Wild or Skyrim doesn't mean it can't be open world. Like, it doesn't have to be GTA to be an open world game, and I've had people tell me that in the comments before. This could be an open world with its own Mario spin. Everything will feel like Mario at its core. Like I said, it would pretty much be if Mario Odyssey took all of its kingdoms and plopped them together in one single map where you can just seamlessly transition from one place to another. That's where Mario needs to go, and I think Mario's future could definitely be something like that. Whether it's Mario Odyssey 2, Mario Galaxy 3, or just a completely brand new Mario game, I think open world definitely should be the way that they should go. And that just sounds so exciting. You know, Mario can get any items that he wants at any order, find new items that open up new paths, and just find all types of cool things throughout his adventure. I mean, he could even come up on random boss battle arenas, similar to how you do in Bowser's Fury with the Colosseum with Boom Boom and Pom Pom. I never prior thought of Mario in an open world space, but the more I think about it, the more it could definitely happen, and in fact, I think it needs to happen. After you've seen the massive success of Breath of the Wild and it's already getting its sequel with once again probably an open world map, I doubt if they change that, we need something like that for Mario, something that's kind of convention breaking and, you know, just groundbreaking for Mario. In fact, Mario Odyssey added a really cool mechanic being the capture mechanic with Cappy, but I wouldn't say it was groundbreaking in world build. I think it was still technically what we expected from games like 64 and Sunshine, just a little bit bigger in some worlds than others. But for the most part, it was still rooted and grounded the way that Mario should be in its open sandbox levels, but I think it's time to finally open it up even further and plop Mario down in a giant expansive landscape. But of course, I leave it up to you guys. What do you think? Do you think Mario will ever enter the fully open world 3D space? Do you think Mario could pull it off, especially with after what they shown us with the little almost tech demo like Bowser's Fury game mode? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Once again, help us reach our goal of 150,000 subs by the end of the year. All you have to do is like the video and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Mario and Nintendo in general. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.